Hello, this is Ray Mota, and welcome to another edition of The Hot Seat. Joining me today is Dennis Cox from Exia. Dennis, thanks for joining The Hot Seat. Thanks for having me. And I think it's your first one. It is. Good, good. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Now, I had a meeting with your CEO where she talked about network visibility and new strategy, new positioning. What does network visibility mean? I mean, why is this important? Well, network visibility really is about giving you insight mm -hmm. into your network so you know what's going on. Right. And uh, it's a great ROI story because okay. what it does is really lowers the cost of tools. Tools to monitor your network and figure out what's going on, we lower that cost. Usually about right. five to eight K, thousand dollars per port. So per it's a pretty good return on investment. Right, now one of the other parts that she talked in there was this whole thing about intelligent visibility. I mean, do you mind taking it a little bit deeper into what that means? Sure, so basic visibility as it was a few years ago was looking at packets at the layer three or four, looking at IP addresses or port numbers, and that, that's useful, that's neat. A lot of things run over port 80, which is web traffic. Now. Right. A lot of things run okay. over. And so you couldn't really tell the difference between a Facebook or a Chase or a Netflix right. or a YouTube. Yeah. And those things really matter because those are the services that are running your network. And so if you make everything, look at everything on 80, you'll get Amazon Prime Video and Netflix. And how do you separate that out from your Oracle transactions right. that may run over port 80? Right. And so application or intelligent visibility is about looking at the application itself mm -hmm. so that you can filter based on that. So you right. can send Chase Bank over here and Wells Fargo over there. Right, makes a lot of sense. Now, in the hot seat, we ask the right question. So what and why should I care? I mean, why is this really important? Because at the end of the day, visibility in your business is all about applications, right. right? The applications run your business, whether it's your financial applications, your salesforce.com, it's really important. Right. Those are the things that make up your business nowadays, at the core of your business. Right. And if you don't have visibility into them, well, it's gonna have a hard time running your business. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, it's interesting. Now, I don't want to simplify, but is it just basically taking a bunch of network processors, putting it in a box to get this functionality, or is there more to this? I'm actually a big fan of network processors. Okay. There's a little bit of that, but it all depends on how you want to do your, your, your visibility. So the biggest thing with visibility is that you're looking at data. Mm -hmm. Now, there's only thing, one thing worse than not having any data. You know what that is? What's that? Bad data. Mm, that's true. If that's you cool. have bad data, it's yeah. worse than having no data at that's all. That's right. Because you will make the wrong decision, and it's not not on purpose, right? Yeah, yeah. And so a lot of times that can happen based on the physical architecture of the platform. Right. We'll use the network processors, for example, on our ATIP blade, mm -hmm. our application threat intelligence processor blade. And we'll use them because they're a great example of using deep packet inspection. Mm -hmm. But we use that just for that. Right. We really want to use FPGA and hardware technology to do the other parts of tech, to right. do the other parts of the yeah, right. visibility. And the reason why is you need 100% sanity. You want to make yeah, sure that every yeah. single packet goes through and you get visibility on everything. If you were to use a shared architecture, like a network processor, yeah. to do your core packet dedupe or something of that nature, you'd be getting bad data. Mm -hmm. And I have to admit, a lot of our competitors yeah. have the bad data, they okay. use MPs. Yeah. We see that in a number of them, and it's because it's cheaper. Right. It's, okay. a, it's cheaper to build and cheaper to get up and going, but it's actually more expensive in the long run. Yeah. And, so, and it doesn't mean the cost to the consumer right. it is more expensive. Uh -huh. It just means the time to get it up and going. Making an FPGA takes a lot of effort and right. time. You have to really think it through, and so therefore it's more expensive on the engineering side. Yeah, that's interesting. When I used to be involved in this field, I remember having to use like a risk processor to do the sure. data capturing, because I could get most of the traffic, and then an uh, Intel processor to do the decoding and that type of piece. Exactly. So being a CTO, I mean, how do you approach the, ar what's the architectural approach to this? Oh, so our architecture approach is multi-layered. Mm -hmm. Really what we want to do first is we want to rely on merchant silicon mm -hmm. so that we have 100% Perfect packets. Okay. We don't want any packet loss. Right, okay. Because otherwise you get the bad data. Right. Packet right. loss, bad data. Okay. Especially in visibility. Right. And then what we use is FPGAs so that we can get line rate, perfect performance for all the packet dedupe, uh, packet slicing, packet trimming, etc. All the different functionalities you need in visibility and why it's so interesting. Yeah. Those are the advanced features. We right. call it the AFM, the advanced features right. modules. And really, it's doing all the transforms on your data mm -hmm. so that you, don't, you can offload the tools. Yeah. The tools don't have to do the transforms, you don't have to buy as many tools. Yeah, okay. That's yeah. the ROI. Yeah. And then lastly, when we go, as we go further up the stack, we we'll use an MP, a network processor, right. and that'll do all the intelligent. But we've already filtered so that we only get the traffic we need up to there yeah. and not all the other stuff. Yeah, that's important. Now, it, it seems like there's competition in this space, I assume, right? There's tons. Yeah, so I mean, with competition, how do you differentiate yourself and how do they handle this? I think it's really easy for us. We were born from a test and measurement background. Ixia started yep. as a test and measurement company, just like HP, yep. just like many companies, actually. And uh, we believe that everything has to be rock solid and right. everything has to be tested. So therefore, you know, there's a, my, uh, my old colleague Craig used to say, if you didn't test it, it didn't work. Right, yeah. Um, <laughs> and, uh, so in this case, 
Uh, we test everything, and we make sure it's prime and works. And we have to work 100% of the time, every time, no packet loss, every time. And that's how we build our products, rock solid. There's other people that, you know, not so much. Right. And, and you can tell. You usually can tell because they won't tell you if they ever dropped. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, in our GUI, we'll have a drop counter. So we'll tell you, hey, by the way, you're getting overloaded. Right. And this could happen on the NAMP, for example, but it yeah. wouldn't happen on the hardware. If you don't see that, it's a good good example that maybe they're hiding something. Right, okay. So, Yeah, no, I mean, we have a whiteboard. I mean, what are the performance impacts in, in actuality, would you say? And in what parts of areas would you say, here's what Ooh. fits? And sure, so a lot of people don't realize that, uh, that on the... The network traffic, you have really two types of packets. Mm -hmm. So if you go from the bottom, we'll just go, we won't use jumbo sure. frames, we'll yep. make this easy. Okay. You have 64 byte packets and 1500 byte packets. Right, okay. But the majority is, everybody says, well, the average is, let's say, 576. Just 576, okay. It's really yeah. not, though. Really, it's a lot over here and a lot over here, and this is your void. Yeah. And the reason why is because TCP connections have a setup. Right, yeah. All right? Mm -hmm. You have your three way setup, and they're all 64 byte packets, and every yeah. acknowledgement, is a 64 it's byte a packet. 64 by packet. And the adder, the FINAC, is a 64 byte packet. Mm -hmm. And over here are your datagrams. And only the last piece of the datagram, the end, that maybe you wrote a sentence and it's just a little bit too long, that'll fit over here. Right. So really what you want to look at is, how is our 64 byte fit packet performance? Right. And that's the big chunk. That's, that's big the big chunk. Right. And uh, for example, I've seen a competitor's box that loses 76%. 76? On yeah. the 64 byte packets. Yeah. We're, we never lose a packet, right, okay. right? that'd be really bad for us. Yeah. So think about that, if you lost 76% of all these transaction flags, and the tool needs these transaction flags to know the beginning yeah. and the end, the end right. to measure the application performance, what kind of data do you get? Yeah, yeah, good point, yeah. Now that's interesting, I mean, uh, I'm really amazed that from a competitive landscape that you can lose about 76% of your traffic. I'm not sure how you maintain, honestly, network visibility, from that point of view, but something more important next is this whole network security. Yeah. How, how, is, how does that imply in this particular case? Well, in this particular case, in the packet loss, it's huge. If you think about it, if you're trying to secure a network, the worst thing that can happen to you is you're getting false alarms or false alert, uh, false alarms or false alerts, or more important, you're missing things. Yeah, yeah. What if your network visibility solution is designed to go help you with security. Right. If it's losing this percentage of packets, you're not secure mm -hmm. at all. You're missing most everything. It's like having a video camera on your door that only works 25% of the right, time. Right, right, yeah. Wow. You know? <laughs> so if you, don't, if you rob the bank on Mondays, you'll get caught, but Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you're Friday, you're good to go. Yeah, good to I go. mean, that's yeah. no security solution. In fact, that's making your security solution far worse. worse. That's why we always advocate test your solutions. Yeah. We believe it on our test and measurement side of the business, we believe it on our application security side of the business, and our visibility side of the business. Test. Everything. Uh, yeah. Pretty you know, and it's important because I always talk about, you know, security is as strong as your weakest link, right? That's right. So you have to be able to have that. Now, taking it a bit further, how does this impact like application performance and network performance? Sure. When you have this much packet loss. I mean, uh, it, it's huge. So if you have this much packet loss going to your tools, let's say some of your tools are changing your WAN links, who you're going to do business with. So today I'm going to do business with, let's say, in Austin, maybe I'm going to do with Time Warner, and tomorrow I'm going to do with AT&T. And I'm going to balance my links that way based on that packet loss. If I'm using a visibility tool to measure that, to mm -hmm. figure out where to send my traffic to, and I don't have an accurate picture, I could be switching over those providers constantly, right. bringing up and down the network, changing those routes, causing me more stress on my network, and more important, on my IT team. Yeah, that's We're right. supposed to improve operational efficiency of the IT team. Right. If you're losing that much data, you're not really doing that. Yeah. Now, I mean, this seems like it's really nice, and I mean, and there's a lot of surprising numbers. But in reality, is this easy to use? Oh yeah, uh, terribly easy to use. Because what we have is we have a, an amazing user interface that lets right. you drag and drop things. You know, think about it this way. When we built the UI for the product, we really thought about the engineer, the IT operator, up at 2 o'clock in the morning. Right. He's okay. up at 2 o'clock in the morning, his CEO called, or, or worse, his chairman of the board. Chairman. board yeah, that happens here at Excel. I have those calls. Yeah, I, I get them all the time, uh, sadly. And uh, he'll call you up and say, this is not working. Who's working on it? And so you've got to wake up, you're, you're groggy, you get on there and you got to figure out this command line interface that you only use right. once a month. We thought about that and said, we need an easy to use UI right. that lets you visually see the network, right. visually see where you can place points, and then you can just drag and drop and connect and get valuable information from that tool. Yeah. More importantly, we've got to give you the first line of awareness and visibility. Yeah. And that's why we built the application threat intelligence processor so that you can see right away where's the traffic coming from all over the yeah. world, what the applications are running your network, what the performance looks like. So you can yeah. get a scope before you go down to your tool right, level. Right. 
uh, you know, because you might have different tools. You might have a voice tool, you might have a database tool, et cetera. And then, of course, we built Threat Armor mm -hmm. for your first line of defense. And that's meant to be able to take out all the cruft on the internet, all the bad stuff that's known bad, so that you're only looking at the good stuff in your tools. So right. that's really what we think about in terms of how to make it easier right. to use. Yeah. Is we built these things just for that, to, to narrow down the point that you're most interested in. Yeah, you know, that kind of gives me some horror stories that I could have used back in the days. I tell people that that's how I lost my hair. You know, I used to be the CTO for a lot of trading floors in Wall Street, and they never called you to say, hey, how's it going? Yeah. It was usually, this is how much money we're losing per minute and all that. Well, Dennis, you're officially off the hot seat. Thanks. With Dennis, this is Ray Moda. Thanks for joining this edition of the Hot Seat.